You guys, ah, oh, I am so fucking excited for today's video. We're gonna be live watching the new Game of Thrones and Urban Decay makeup collection. Oh my god, I am pumped. I am heated. I'm excited. I'm worried. I don't want to be disappointed. I've seen people online being disappointed, and I was like, oh, that's such a bummer. And then when I actually got the PR package in the mail, it's right behind me. I was like, wait. I really like this, so I'm hoping the swatches don't disappoint. Fingers crossed. We're going to be trying everything on today. The lip colors, the cheek stain, the highlighters, the eyeshadows, obviously, the eyeliners. It's going to be a long, long video, so I'm going to zip my lip. Just know this collection launches April 14th. It is limited edition. And if you're a Game of Thrones fan, this is kind of everything. So first off, of course, there's the eyeshadow palette. Look at this packaging. Have you not seen better packaging? It is so Game of Thrones. You have swords back here. I mean, there's mapping on the side of the packaging. Ow. I love how it almost looks like an old book. It's super, super cool. I mean, you have the official Game of Thrones logo. You also have like HBO printing and rights on the back of this, which I'm like, yeah, so official. Super cool. I love the map detailing on the side of all the packaging. It's beautiful. So when you open it up, it's kind of cool. A lot of people didn't like this, but I'm like, listen, baby, if I'm getting a Game of Thrones makeup collection, like you better bring it. And I thought that they really brought it. So you open it up and there is a mirror on this side right here. And then there's this adorable little quote from Daenerys. It says Lannister, Targaryen, Baratheon, Stark, Tyrell. They're all just spokes on a wheel. This one's on top, then that one's on top. And on and on it spins, crushing those on the ground. Fantastic quote. You peel it open. Da, da, da. There it is. The throne. The throne of which the games are played on. And then there's a quote from Tyrion Lannister that says, never forget who you are. The rest of the world will not. Wear it like armor and it can never be used to hurt you. And I think that's amazing. It is so cool. Ah! I'm gonna be ordering this collection just for collecting purposes. Mine's gonna get a little, you know, roughed up because we're doing live swatches and such, but I really wanna keep one just to collect because I'm such a Game of Thrones fan. So this was the biggest complaint I saw with the palette. People were really annoyed about all this excess packaging and it's gonna be hard to use and it's so bulky. Nope, Urban Decay thought of that, much like many of their bigger palettes. Nowadays, anyway, it slides out, making it super convenient. You can take it right out of the palette. Ah, oh, bless them, and just hold it. Look at this, you can just hold it. It's light as a feather. All your product is right there. I love that. Like, yeah, it's big, but we have all the houses to represent and I like it. I like it. I'm excited. And we've got everything represented here. We have Hard Home, Winterfell, King's Landing, Bay of Dragons. It's super, super cool. Then of course, most exciting to me is the Game of Thrones Mother of Dragons highlight palette. I love the packaging. This is the packaging that it comes in, this little box. And then you still have this amazing metallicness and just, it looks so dragony. I love that. When you open it up, there is a mirror on top. And then here we have the three dragon shades. I'm so excited about this. It looks not the most wearable, I won't lie to you. But again, as like a fan of Game of Thrones, I don't care if it's the most obscure colors ever. I feel like it should be. These are the dragon's eggs. They shouldn't be super wearable in my opinion if you're a true Game of Thrones fan. I understand if you just wanted something more wearable, but honey, no, this is Game of Thrones, okay? This is Game of Thrones. It should be a little funky, okay? There are two brushes in this collection, which I am sorry I refuse to take out of their packaging. I'm going to collect these. Of course, we have Arya Stark's Needle Sword. This was the sword that was custom created for her and she lost it and then she got a bag and it's so amazing. Every time Needle's there, you're like, yeah! Oh, I love it. So it's a smaller detailer brush because as you know, Needle is super duper thin. And then of course we have Jon Snow's Long Claw, which is super, super awesome. There's a little wolf head up here. It's a bigger, fluffier shadow brush. Next we have the eyeliners and you guys I was shocked to discover that I think I'm mostly excited in this collection Not mostly excited, but I'm really pumped about the eyeliners. They look really really gorgeous So this here is just the packaging. I love the colors. I love the print on them They have such a beautiful design and they're very unique shades here are the liners themselves You have this beautiful ombre packaging. So I'm like, ooh, are they gonna have like a multicolored finish? I don't know. I am so excited to try these out. We then have the lipsticks and the lip Lipsticks really represent each house in my opinion. We have Cersei Lannister's that has kind of a really royal print, a really fancy design.
design. There's Daenerys Targaryen here, which almost has like scales. I would think of like dragon scales. Then we have Sansa Starks, which of course has the wolf heads on it. And it's super kind of like dark, like the North. And then we have White Walker, which has kind of an icy feel to it. And then we have the Dracarious lip and cheek stain, which looks super, super awesome. Are you guys as ready as I am? I am so ready. So let's first start with the lip swatches. Then we will move on to highlighters and we will finish off with all the eye stuff. The first lipstick is Cersei Lannister's. This is a metallic formula and I do think it really fits and represents her and her house. Oh, very bronzy, very metallic. There is Cersei Lannister's lipstick. It's definitely very unique. It's bronzy. There's a little golden and it's highly metallic, which I think really represents them. It does remind me of like wealth, luxury, things like that. And the color is just very unique. I really don't think I have another lipstick in this shade. So that's kind of cool. So there is Cersei Lannister's lipstick. Next, we are doing Sansa Stark's lipstick. This is a sheer formula. It looks to be a beautiful peach. Definitely sheer, but really pretty tone. I love the glossy finish. It is super comfortable. It just feels like butter on the lips. I love that. And it is a really nice flush of color. This is a great lipstick I would actually just keep in my bag anytime I need a little more color, but nothing that could clash with whatever given makeup I have on that day. Super cute, and I think it does resemble Sansa. I think it's something that she would wear if she wore a nice sheer lipstick. Next, we have Daenerys Targaryen's lipstick. This is a metallic formula, and it is a red. I love this way more than I thought. I was going to. I did kind of a bad application. When I first saw this, I was kind of like, Bleh. I don't always love metallic lips, but this red is like super unique. There's almost a little more pink in there. It's like a ruby, like yummy, like berry red almost. I love it. I could see how maybe for Daenerys, I would have preferred something almost fiery, right? Because Mother of Dragons, fire, walks through fire, all that type of stuff. But it is a beautiful lip color, so I'm not mad at it as long as I get to have this color. Like, I don't care whose it is. I think it's super cute. Last but not least, we have White Walker. This is a comfort matte formula. Oh, wow. I did not expect that to come out so pigmented. I don't know why. Kind of dumb. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is a deep, sexy, burgundy. Oh my gosh, I love this color. I'm sure a lot of us probably have something a little similar to it. It is super rich. It's like vivacious with color, but it is deep in the soul. And it's a little scary. So it does remind me of White Walkers. I, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Now we're gonna do the highlighters, which I'm really excited to see what they look like on the skin. Here it is in all its glory. Of course, we have Dragon, which is my favorite dragon. We have Viserion and we have Regal. So let's first start with with Dragon, of course. I'm taking my Sigma FO3 highlighter brush for this. Oh, that's actually slightly more wearable than I thought it was gonna be. Definitely has a pretty little purple lavender look to it, which I understand it not matching the dragon because Dragon is not purple, but you know, I think it's fun. So here we have Dragon, what do you guys think? Super smooth, it looks super creamy on the skin. Um, Definitely has a bit of that lavender tint to it. It's cute. Next we have Viserium. Oh, that's kind of just like a light gold. That's pretty. These actually are like better on the skin than they look in the palette, I swear. When I first saw the palette, I was kind of like, eh, I don't know. That one's really pretty. This one I would actually wear every day. It's a very nice light golden color. It's very, very pretty. Would probably be the most wearable for me in this palette would be this shade. So super cute. So my camera just stopped filming. I'm sorry about that. But the last one we're doing is Regal. And you can see I've already applied it and I'm mad. Sorry about that. This one I will say has the most unique, most beautiful glow to it. It has like this peachy, pinky, golden glow. It is magical. Really, it's beautiful. Unfortunately for me, my skin's just a little too fair for this highlighter because the glow looks amazing when I turn this way. If I'm not like in a blinding light, you can see that like dark strip it leaves on your face. That being said, if you have medium to deep skin, this is going to be breathtaking on you. And even though we can't use it on the face, I would love to blend this all over the eyes. I think it would give a really cool shimmer. This is my favorite, even though I can't really wear it. It's like my favorite color of the palette. It's beautiful. Hey, so it's a new day. Same shirt, different day. Let's keep going. So what I forgot to do yesterday was this lip and cheek tint, which I always love these. So I'm excited. I'm nervous. I don't know. My favorite forever is always the Benefit cheek tints, of course. But even more so than those, I love the creamy uh, cheek tints, like the Glossier cheek tints. So I tend to prefer more of a cream type of 
tint cheeky thingy. I get nervous with these liquid stains because I feel like they go on really quick and then they stain and it's like, ah! And normally with products like these, I would prefer to put it on before I do my foundation because I just feel like it stains so quick, these liquids. But we're gonna go ahead and try it. So this is the Dracaris Lip and Cheek Stain. It is super red, as you can see. Don't go spilling this now. Oh, could you imagine? That's a headache. As I've said a hundred times, it's for lips and cheeks. So I'm gonna start with just a little bit on my finger and I'm gonna pop it on the old cheek. I don't see it at all. Oh. I mean, it's quite natural. I'm glad it's not like overly intense. You know what I mean? It is extremely subtle. That's just a little bit. I'm sure you could probably put on, I'm going on a little more heavy handed over here now. See what that does. It's actually a lot more wearable than what I thought it would be. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's not, it's not real dramatic by any means, but I kind of like that. Let's also do some on the lips. It's cute. It's a cute little color like your lip color but better. Doesn't feel tacky or like tight or weird. Sometimes some stains get like weird feeling on the lips but I actually can't even feel it. So to be honest, I would purchase this if I was buying the collection and wasn't sent to NPR just because I think it looks like the coolest. It almost looks like a little vial of blood and I think it looks very Game of Thronesy. It's time for eyeliner. I'm so excited for these. These I'm just like the most excited about for in this collaboration which is crazy sauce because it's just eyeliner. Um, But the packaging is so so I want to start with the lightest ones um, in case they stain or anything like that. So I first want to take the shade Winterfell Snow. It looks like it's white, but there might be some blue shimmer in there, I'm assuming. I love the ombre packaging. Right off the bat, I just want to, oh yeah, it's super icy. Beautiful blue shimmer. Can you see that glow? I'm sure my camera isn't doing it much justice, but it's kind of like a robin's egg blue shimmer. I'm just going to do this on my top lash line. And I'm doing it a little bit thicker than I normally would with eyeliner, just so you guys can get a good look. Super icy. It's just a light blue shimmer eyeliner. It's really, really cute. It could be a nice change of pace from the traditional like nude eyeliner a lot of us wear on our waterline to kind of brighten things up. It's icy blue, so it'll make your eyes look nice and bright and light still without being too blue, too noticeable. So again, that is Winterfell Snow and I like it. Oh, next up we have Lannister Gold. This one gets me excited. I, okay, listen, Alok hates me. My my family hates me because I'm a Lannister like diehard. I don't know what it is. I love the psycho Lannisters. I all their disgustingness is yeah gross but I love the Lannisters. <laughs> This one's real cool because it's, do you see that? It's almost like taupey gold. It's really, really pretty. I love that. When you get out of the light, it goes so dark. It is sexy. And a Lannister always pays their debts. Don't forget. So let's pop this on here. Oh, wowza. Oh, I'm obsessed. I love it because it's almost like gritty and dingy. You guys know I love shades like that. It's not, like they could have just as easily done a yellowy standard gold eyeliner. No, this is really unique. Probably gonna buy four or five of these just to have for backups because, oh, I can see myself loving this. I mean, even just dramatically on the lash line right now, do a little quick pencil wing. This is really cool. I really am such a fan of this eyeliner. Oh, it's so cool. I love Love this shade so much. Okay, again, this one is Lannister Gold. Next, we have the Night King. This is a beautiful teal. A little bit of shimmer in there. You just can't beat the Urban Decay pencil liners, can you? They are so creamy. No tugging. If tugging's an issue for you with eyeliner, if you've not tried the Urban Decay eyeliners, I know they're pricey. They're about, what are they? 18 bucks, I think? Maybe not. I don't remember. It's been a while since I was working in working in them makeup stores, but they're worth every penny. They are just so creamy and they last forever. And they have the, the more colors than you could ever dream of for eyeliner. Wow, I really made this wing a little funky. Any color you could want. That is beautiful. Oh, that is, an, that is a look all in of itself. You know what, I have not done like colorful winged liner in a long time and this is really inspiring me. I really wanna wear this eyeliner more. Not with this red ass cheeks, it looks a little funny. They're kind of fighting against each other, the two colors, but mm -hmm. if you were to remove that cheek color, it would look a lot better. Um, I love it. Perfect amount of shimmer, not too much, but enough to really like capture the eye. The next shade we are doing is Dragon Smoke and I think that explains that name, like really fits this shade perfectly. This is it on my hand here. It is just a smoky purple. I was hoping there would be some red glitter in there, but there's not. Just with the packaging and all, I thought it would be a cool touch, but it is not there. I love how deep this is though. I love the metallic like flex in there. This is one I'm definitely going to wear on my waterline often. I already know it. 
sometimes like I just get so sick of the black waterline, you know what I mean? You want to mix it up, but you don't want anything too colorful that's going to distract from whatever eye look you're wearing. So I think this would just be such a nice touch. I'm trying to figure out what color the glitter is. It could even be like a, almost like a rainbow glitter. Because I feel like I see a little pink, purple, and possibly blue. So there is the shade Dragon Smoke. I love it. This is definitely in my top favorites. This will probably be the shade that I wear the most often. I just love the color. It's like really sexy and smoky and colorful without being too loud. I think it's super, super gorgeous. So now we're going to be getting to the most exciting part of this video, in my opinion anyway. We're going to be doing the eyeshadow palette swatches. If you're new to my live swatching video, just as you've seen with every other product so far in this collection, I will be swatching each eyeshadow on my eye so you guys can see what it looks like on the actual eyes. There are a lot of shadows here. There's actually 20 shadows, so I'm going to try and go through this as quickly as possible. So first off, I'm going to jump into the shade Stromborn, which is a beautiful purple, lots of shimmer. You know what, now that I'm holding the palette and I'm about to use it, it would have been great. And I know it's huge, so like how could they do this? If there could somehow be a mirror on this, now I get it. Like as you're holding it, that is super awkward. I don't want to go back into the shadow book. That's big and clunky. So in this moment, I am realizing that that palette design is kind of annoying. So as usual, I've prepped my lid with a little bit of concealer for the base. And we're going to go ahead and lay this on. Ooh, pretty. This is my Sigma E60 shader brush. This shadow formula so far is exactly what you would expect from Urban Decay. If you've ever, ever used an Urban Decay palette and you've used their shimmery, glittery shades, they tend to be a little on the chunky side. Best used wet, of course, or with a tacky base. There is a ton of fallout, so just be warned. So there is Stromborn. Next, we're going into the shade House Tigerian. This looks kind of like a, like a weedy, bronzy shade. Does that make sense? Get a little more on the brush. That one's a little... Lackluster on first application. Okay, that's a little bitter. That's a little bitter. I think the shade really fits House Tigarian. So with these themed collections, kind of like the ColourPop Villains collection that just came out, sometimes I try not to get too literal with the shade names, with the collection, and with their chosen colors. Sometimes it's an overall vibe, it's an overall feel. Just look at it as, are you really going to use these shades enough to buy this big palette? Or are you like me and you're just a crazy fangirl and I'm gonna buy a second collection just because I want to have it for collecting purposes, duh. Next, we're gonna get into a shade I'm super excited for because it's a little murky, a little dingy, it's definitely my vibes. This is Dothraki. This appears to be something like an olive gold, perhaps? And again, you can use these shimmer shades with a wet brush to give you more of a metallic effect. I wish I could do that in this video. There's just too many shadows and they're almost all shimmers, I'm realizing. So just unfortunately, my eyes would probably be raw if I did that. So I apologize for that, but just know that with a wet brush, it'll of course be more amplified. You know what, I was hoping that would have a little more impact than it does now that I see it on the eyeball. For this shade, I would probably want to use this on a black base to really get it to like oomph up a bit. It needs to be just heightened, just one more level. Next we have the shade Bend the Knee, another purple. I feel like it would have been sick if like they even just made the back a mirror. You could just like flip it over, that would be kind of cool, I don't know. Because I guess maybe not because then you could potentially like put your fingers in the shadows if you're holding it backwards. It's nice to just lay the palette on your desk and work off it, but like not everyone has like a, you know, full on mirror to get ready in or if you're traveling or something, I don't, I don't think you would take this to travel, but you know, it's just more convenient to hold your palette and use it at the same time. I actually love this shadow and I didn't think I was going to. It's a beautiful lavender with some baby blue reflective tones to it. I will say it's nothing unique. I think we've seen this shade from every brand and from Urban Decay. So there is the shade Bend the Knee. The last shade in the bottom row is Bay of Dragons and I believe this is a topper. It's a little smoother, so I'm gonna do this with my finger. Listen, this is Bay of Dragons. I have a lot of high hopes for this shade, I'm not gonna lie. Right after I just said, try not to, you know, make the palette so literal. And here I am like, it better look like the Bay of Dragons. I don't, that looks horrible. That actually looks horrible. It's like, the dullest, flakiest shade I've ever seen in my life. I'm not, no, okay, I'm gonna wet my finger right now. I'm gonna wet my finger because this, this can't be Bay of Dragons. I know they did not mean it to be this dull. I know they wanted more, something more spectacular for Bay of Dragons. I know they did. Fucking depressed right now. I'm really upset. Ah, uh, meh. This is horrible. This is not Bay of Dragons. I want a red, 
shifting eyeshadow that shifts into hot pink and shifts into orange. I want a shifter. What is this? This is the flakiest, weirdest shit I've ever seen. I'm upset, okay? I can't believe I was just preaching about how don't take this palette so literally and now I'm kind of like, bitch, you are not Bay of Dragons. Okay, I'm a little bit more excited for this next group of shades. I'm hoping they're going to be better. So we're first going to start with Red Keep. Yeah, I don't know. That last group ended up not being what I wanted it to be. Oh, this is pretty. Gorgeous warm copper. Nicely pigmented on first application. And I love that this one, like, it isn't too metallic. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's beautiful. It's just, it's a gorgeous color. I really do like this color. Thank God. Oh, thank God. I was scared. Extremely pigmented with very minimal fallout. Almost essentially no fallout. But dang, I could just apply this color all day. This is beautiful. The next shade we are live swatching is Castor Lead Rock. I'm excited for this color because it looks a little murky, a little dingy, a little grunge, which is what I love. Ooh beautifully pigmented. Oh, I love this color family so far. This is such a me shade. Oh my goodness. It is so pigmented. It's not too metallic. It gives a little dimension, but you wouldn't really see it glowing. You know what I mean? Kind of, but oh, this is gorgeous. I love, 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 love this color. The next shade is House Lannister. It's a nice little peachy color. Oh, like super peach. Super duper duper peach. I thought it was going to be a little more toned down, and I'm glad that it's not. I think this color would look beautiful behind a ton of the shades in this palette. It's interesting. It, like, goes on a little more pastel, but then it kind of oxidizes. It definitely deepens with a tackier base, but if you did, you know, your primer first and then set it with some translucent powder, it wouldn't do this. I love that shade. It's super matte and it's super pretty. Next, we're going to go into the shade Lannister Red. And pop that on. Again, super pigmented. I will say, I was a little, not a little, I was really disappointed in Urban Decay's like Naked Reloaded. What is that palette? Their new Naked palette. I thought the quality, it like almost seemed like it had gone down from previous palettes, even from the original Naked palette. I wasn't very satisfied. So I was a little nervous about the quality of the shadows in this palette. But I will say, I'm. I'm surprised, especially by the mattes, because they are extremely pigmented. It definitely is a Lannister red. It is super, super awesome. So this so far definitely has been my favorite little color family. The very last topper shade is King's Landing. I'm gonna do this one with my finger again, because it's just a different texture. I think if you felt it, you would get what I mean. It definitely feels like it should be done with your finger. Oh, that one's lovely. It's way brighter than what it looks like in the pan. And when you get it on the eye, it like really starts to glow. Bay of Dragons, I just felt like was really dull. For being a topper eye color, I was not impressed. This one at least has some oomph. It has some, you know, life to it. So just kind of like what I'm doing, I'd recommend putting it on top of a, oh no, that consistency is not right. Mm -mm. Oh no, damn it, Ugh. that's really frustrating. It just looks textured and gross. I'm sure you can pick up on what I mean. With these topper shadows, what I'm noticing is it kind of almost looks like less is more with them because once you start caking it on, you get cake eyeball. Like what? <laughs> I'm sad. I thought King's Landing was going to be good. And it did look good at first. And it was like, I put on one too many layers of it and it got funky dunky. So keep that in mind. There is King's Landing. Next, we're going to pop up here into the shade Nymeria. Ooh, a delicious little chocolatey, light chocolatey brown. Hmm, chocolate. I miss it. I hate dieting. Help me. I like never want to have to fit into a wedding dress again. This is honestly like so effing brutal. Why did I do this to myself? Why did I pick such a tight, sexy little dress? I will never know. I mean, you guys already know I love the shade. I love a matte chocolatey brown and it was very pigmented. When Next, we're popping into the shade Winter is Here. Oh my god, is it ever. I am so excited for Game of Thrones. We only have like 10 more days now. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Ooh, I feel like this is a very fitting shade for this little, you know, Winterfell collection. I think the color story makes a lot of sense with the greens and the browns and there's that purple. I really like it. 
Oh, you know I love this one because it's kind of dirty and smoky and I love it. It's gritty. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Can I tell you guys something so funny? It's like not even funny. It's kind of gruesome. But if you're into true crime, like I am like in a creepily big way, like since childbirth, I've been sickly obsessed with murder. So when I'm filming my live swatching videos, if I'm not watching YouTube videos, I'm always playing the My Favorite Murder podcast. It's like the best murder podcast ever if you're a little creepily obsessed with murder as I am. And so like, it's funny to like be putting on eyeshadow and be like, oh, this is beautiful. I love the colors and the tones and blah, blah, blah. And and then I'll like stop the camera to remove the eyeshadow and clean my brush and prep my lid for the next shade and it'll be like guts were everywhere his head was bashed in with a rubber hammer and it's just like oh my god if only you guys could hear what was going on over here it is gruesome next we're going into the purple where wood leaves for some reason it's not ringing a bell in my head because Game of Thrones is a lot to keep up with if you've never watched it before and if you have I'm sure you know what I'm talking about but I found this book that like has every like Game of Thrones character, location, place, you know, name, uh, term, like everything in there. And so when I rewatched it, I would peep through that book to make sure I understood everything. Smoky, sooty, yummy, purple. I love this color. This is super awkward. At this point in time in the video, my microphone stopped working, you guys. So I am voiceovering these last few shades and I'm so sorry about that. Next, we're gonna get into the shade, The Sight, which is a beautiful forest green. This was actually one of my favorite shades of the entire palette. You know that I'm crazy about greens and it went on so, so beautifully. It's dark, it's kind of like a mellow forest green, but there's like a depth to it that I just thought was breathtaking. I love this color. Next, we're going into, again, one of my favorite shades of the palette. This is Winterfell. It is super gritty. It's actually, I think, the only topper shadow. Yeah, the only topper shadow that I really loved. It almost looks like fool's gold on the eye. It's chunky, but I love it. It almost looks like glitter. It is a beautiful taupey gold. I am obsessed with this color. Next, going into the White Walker section, we are taking the White Walker color. I was super disappointed in this shade. It just looked almost chalky. You can see it's a light blue and there's a little bit of lavender trying to flash through, but you can hardly see it. It was a dud for me. Next, we're getting into the shade Free Folk. This is a true platinum silver. It is a great silver. There's nothing wrong with the silver, but I was upset that it was just a silver. These are the White Walkers people. Like, it could have been anything amazing. Duochrome, icy, blue, flashy, and it was just silver. Ugh, this whole row just kind of really annoyed me. This shade is Hard Home, another one of those topper shades. I think it was supposed to be something really amazing. It's a kind of peachy, flashy color, not really. And the texture of these, you guys, is just really not that great. I was not a fan of this shade at all. Next, and arguably the only shadow that I really loved in this section, is Frozen North. It is a beautiful, deep, icy blue teal not even icy but just kind of frosty colored I don't know how to describe it but it is beautiful great metallic finish and just a really nice color last and quite possibly my least favorite shade take the black you guys know my problem with shadows like this it is a matte black shadow with specks of silver glitter in it. Because those two are fused together, you never see the flecks of glitter on your actual eye. It drives me nuts. It is a sham. They will not stick. You can't use like a glitter base to hold it down because it's a matte eyeshadow and that will make the matte shadow itself act funny. So there's really no point in brands continuously putting specks of glitter into matte shadows. It's not like they're adding metallic finishes to help blending or a pearlized finish. No, it's actual pieces of glitter. There's nothing for them to adhere to. So that just drives me absolutely crazy. As you can see right now, as I'm describing it to you guys, oh my gosh, it drives me nuts. So that's it for my live swatches, you guys. I cannot apologize enough for this mic problem. I clearly finished recording the video and didn't even realize that my mic had stopped working. So I sincerely apologize for that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you're interested in this collection or are you not? I generally really enjoyed the collection. There were some dud shadows to me in my opinion, but overall, I can't lie when I say I think I'm really coming from just being such a fan of Game of Thrones that I almost feel like my vision's blurred a little bit 
little bit and I'm just really excited about this collection. So you guys let me know your thoughts. I think at the very least the eyeliners and the lipsticks and the highlighter palette are fantastic. Maybe you don't need the shadow palette but if you're a big fan I think you might just like to have it. So anyway let me know your thoughts you guys. Tutorial with this collection is coming up next on my channel. Stay tuned for that. I love you and I'll see you again soon. Bye!